my dear young friend, I'm sure that you have experienced the dryness of prayer. Prayer can be very difficult. And don't think that only you find it difficult. The saints also found it difficult. Jesus, on the night before he died, was with St. Peter. And he said to Peter, Peter, tonight, before the cock crows twice, you will have denied me three times. And Peter, rather than submit and in humility ask and beg for grace and mercy and assistance to not fall into such a trial, rather he says, Lord, no, I will never deny you. And in so doing, he fails to humbly ask for grace. And in some sense, we can see the difficulty that he's having with his prayer and his dialogue with our Lord. It is not easy to speak to our Lord. And so here we see Peter is an example for us of how we can better improve our relationship and spiritual life. And what I'm sure Peter and many of the saints realized as time went on and after they failed once and twice and many times, what they realized was that they are standing on the edge of an abyss, a massive void that is the plethora of so many sins that we could possibly fall into. And it is very easy for me standing on top of this cliff at the edge of it and before this abyss, it's very easy for me to fall in. The only thing that is stopping me from falling is not my own strength, but rather that I am being held to the earth, to the mountain, to this cliff by a string. And the string seems to be very fragile. It seems very small, like one of those strings that you would sew with. It's not a massive rope. It's not chains but it is this tiny, almost invisible string. And that string is the grace of God. And sometimes we think that the strong things of the world, the ropes and the heavy uh, metal chains of the world are stronger to keep us on the ground and, and safe. But really, if we depend on God's grace, it is that grace that will keep us safe from now until we end our lives, hopefully in the grace of God. And the only thing that can make that string to break is the free will act by which we take scissors and we cut and we, we, we separate ourselves from the love of God, symbolized here by the string. And so I invite you to keep that relationship going. And that is what prayer is. And the more that you open your heart and your mind and your troubles and your struggles and your vocation and all the questions that you have and all the desires and all the dreams, the more you open those things up to God and you invite him in to dialogue with you and to tell you about maybe his plans or where he would have you go, the more that that string will be strong and your relationship will be firm and constant and enduring and, and unbreakable. And the more that we slacken in our prayer and the more that we sort of ignore it and think it's not important and it's not gonna help or anything, the more it's going to become weak. In the end, God is pouring out from his heart through the church and her sacraments, through your prayer, through the people in your lives, your parents, priests, and many wise people that he has placed in your life. He is pouring out many graces from heaven to earth and to you. And if you open yourself up to receive those graces, then you will have a trusting relationship with God and there will be an exchange of intimacy where he shares with you his secrets and you open up your heart and your secrets to him and you allow him in. But you might say to me, Father, but I'm busy. I will respond to you with the words of Saint Eucarius. Important affair, only affair, irreparable affair. No error can be compared to the error of neglecting eternal salvation. For all other errors, there is a remedy. If you lose property in one way, you can recover it in another. If you gain a debt, you could maybe pay it off. 
if you lose a situation, you can repair it. Even if you die, provided that you are saved, all is safe. But if you lose your soul, my dear friend, the loss is irreparable. Death happens but once. The soul, if lost, is lost forever. And nothing remains but to weep for all eternity with the other miserable souls in hell, where their greatest torment consists in the conviction that the time of repairing the ruin is gone forever. Let us turn to the Virgin Mary, whom we call the help of Christians. She will help us to use our time well, to use our time so that we can benefit for all eternity and not to be foolish in wasting the time and neglecting our prayer.